As you know, Sean is fulfilling his duty as an officer in the Naval Reserve, and that is why he cannot be here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I can see him hiding in those bushes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is Melissa McCarthy's interpretation of Sean Spicer hiding in the bushes uh, during a sketch on SNL last night. And this is because the real-life White House press secretary had a very challenging week, and that is what we saw reflected in the program. Let's bring Yelena Adzik to explain. Uh, you know, watching that, I, you got to laugh at the window, but I wonder how Sean Spicer <laughs> reacts when he sees that. Can you imagine? I mean, just the week alone, uh, the Bushes incident, the, the fact that uh, Spicer's giving out the news, the, the firing of Comey, and then the talk just recently that maybe he would get canned or the press briefings will not go on altogether. I mean, there's so many questions up in the air right now. So the timing... It just is perfect for SNL to capitalize on all of this. And Melissa McCarthy, wow, the way that she just embodies this role. Have another look at her performance from last night. Were you surprised that he fired Comey before he fired you? Oh, God. God, it killed her. <laughs> <laughs> Little anger there, but then love was in the air. Have a look at this. Sean, kiss me. Oh, I can't. I have a wife. I took vows. No, I'm famous. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, wait. Is this like the Godfather when you kiss me and no one ever sees me again? Yes. <laughs> And, you know, McCarthy was the host of SNL last night, and what they've done this whole season is stick with big names, and that's no exception next weekend when they have the closer for the season. They're going to have Dwayne Johnson hosting. So, yeah, The Rock. And uh, it's it's just uh, been a winning formula for them so far. Yeah, yeah, very winning formula, as you say, season finale next weekend. But when you look at this past season, really we've seen a big jump for SNL. And one wonders, where does it go from here? It, well, you know, to think about that, we got to go a little bit further back because, Michael, if you remember, a little over a year ago, Trump himself hosted Saturday Night Live, much to the dismay of many people who felt that it was inappropriate at the time he made derogatory comments about Mexicans. And then what we had was a turning point in terms of SNL's life, its ratings and its relevancy when the debates happened. We all remember the first time, many of us do anyway, when we saw Alec Baldwin embrace that role as Trump, and there you see Kate McKinnon as Clinton and those debates that was pivotal after that Baldwin set a five-year ratings record for that sketch show um, it was up 22 percent in total viewers over the last year so 10.6 million versus 8.6 million the year before and you think of all the cast of characters they had Putin there uh, often you know repeatedly week after week kind of poking at that relationship between the U.S. and Russia and then you know when I mentioned Kate McKinnon earlier it can't be overstated her role here she is singing mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people remember that shortly after the inauguration. They had on comedian Dave Chappelle. He was talking about race relations. They tried to stay so current to the events of that particular day. In some cases, the actual day on Saturday. Uh, and then it, it's been incredible to see Kate McKinnon uh, embrace these different roles. Kellyanne Conway, a lot of people were watching her to see uh, in, her in this particular role. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a flashback now of her playing Kellyanne Conway. Do you have that dinner with Mitt Romney tonight? Uh, do I have to? Yes, sir. Well, then can we at least uh, have a picture of us together where he looks like a little bitch? <laughs> okay. I'm ready to start this briefing. Oh, okay. But wait, where is my chief strategist, Steve Bannon? I can't start without Steve Bannon. He's walking in right now. <laughs> So there you have it, SNL trying to, uh, you know, reclaim its uh, its place in pop culture canon. Now, it, what they also did, they reduced commercial breaks by about 30% to make live viewing more palatable in our digital age. And they also did a lot of sketches where they'd be more apt to be shared socially. You're thinking about Scarlett Johansson taking on Ivanka Trump as a perfume ad, uh, implicit, implying that she was part of all of this. Uh, and so they've really made a lot of different changes, and so much so that 
that now we're seeing NBC announcing uh, earlier we saw a summer primetime spinoff of sorts. This is for Weekend Update. Uh, also earlier in April, uh, based on the popularity, NBC broke 42 years of tradition and decided to make the West Coast and the East Coast have a show air at the exact same time so all of North America could actually watch live. That had a lot to do with social media too because the punchlines were being spoiled mm -hmm. by social media, people sending them out. So a lot of changes for SNL. Uh, so it's certainly stayed relevant now and uh, it'll be fascinating to watch what happens in the future because how could real life get any more absurd in some ways? Absolutely, Alda. Thank you. We'll see you soon, Michael.